then I want to keep this leg away from me. Okay? I don't want him to get a scoop grip, which is like an underhook on the leg, and I don't want him to get an over wrap grip either. Okay, both of these are bad. Okay, but I would say the scoop grip is worse for me because now his elbow is in a position to go back, go back, and catch a heel. Okay, if it's, if it's an over wrap grip, it's bad because it, I can't spin now, but he can't immediately get a heel hook, so it's not like as immediately dangerous. Okay, it's still bad, but it's not as bad as it could be. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get that leg away from him. Okay, now a lot of like inexperienced 50 50 battles look like this you have two guys that are just trying to open each other's legs like this, right? Because nobody has the confidence to open up their legs, okay? If you can open up your legs and stay safe, you can keep this leg away from him, and he will not have the ability to restrict your movement as much, okay? Movement is the key to success in 50-50. Okay, if you understand how to move fluidly, you can succeed in 50-50. Like, you can definitely succeed with locked legs, it's definitely possible, but it's way harder, okay? It's just like if you're playing closed guard, right? What's gonna be, a more powerful offensive closed guard. A closed guard where you can dynamically move your hips to attack different things, or a closed guard where you're just like squeezing tight because you're scared of like him. Like if you ever open your closed guard, he stands up and runs away, you're like, oh, crap. <laughs> he got out, right? It's the same thing here. If you lock your legs because you're scared of getting leg locked, right? If your only way of staying safe is with locked legs, you're never gonna be able to like dynamically attack. Okay? So that's why the first thing we did was was this basic defense. And now we want to talk about getting this leg away from him, okay? So we get this leg away from him, and we have our hands here positioned for him. If, if, uh, if he, uh, go back, sorry. If he reaches to this, uh, this leg, he reaches to this leg, and you push away, okay? Now what we're going to look at is he's going to take an ankle lock grip on this leg. That's what people will pretty frequently do when they can't get a control of this leg, okay? There's a couple reasons he's going to do this. First of all, it's just a good control, okay? You might not even be looking for the submission could just be a good control. But also there's a good submission. So, no, 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 let's go angle up, go shallow, shallow, and put your feet on my hips. Okay, this can definitely be really strong. It's not a heel hook, it's not the worst submission you can get put in, but it's, it's not good. We don't want that to happen, okay? For him to get the ankle lock, he's gonna have to go really, really low on my ankle, and the elbow needs to come back, okay? And then he's probably gonna wanna get his feet on my hips for the, uh, for the bridge, probably more like this. Okay, make sense, guys? You can't really finish an ankle lock, like this, okay? And he can't finish an ankle lock also if the elbow can't come back, okay? So as soon as I feel, so I'm here, I kept this leg away from him, so let go of this for one second. I kept this leg away from him and I feel an ankle lock grip coming on. He can't grip low right away, can just come back? Look where my ankle is, it's against his torso, right? And I'm not, I'm not here, okay? So here he could go low, actually, nah, actually it would be pretty hard still. Yeah, you couldn't actually. So he can't grip low, so he's got to grip high, and then he has to go low. Keep going, keep going. And then he can get what he wants. Okay, come back. As he's doing that, I put my foot on my foot. Okay? This is first of all going to make... No, rotate this way. This is first of all going to make it really, really hard for him to finish the ankle lock because he can't retract the elbow back. Right? My foot is blocking that. So when this happens, then he goes, okay, I can't finish the ankle lock. Okay. By the way, guys, this might like hurt really bad still, but your foot is not going to break. If he can't bring the elbow back, your foot is not going to break. Okay? Like I've been, I've had like really, really strong like aggro guys in competition. Like yeah. <laughs> you've been there for some of these, like, where the elbows. He's trying to like break my foot, but as long as you have this, it might hurt, but you're not going to get broken. You just got to have the confidence that you plant the foot here. The ankle lock is not gonna, it's not gonna break your leg. Now, if you're dealing with Tex Johnson and some dude who's like 250 pounds, okay, I don't wanna like, <laughs> I don't wanna say it'll never happen, but it is very difficult, okay? So anyway, we're here. He's probably gonna realize, okay, the ankle lock is not working anymore. What's the next thing you think he's gonna look for? Probably gonna be a heel hook. So when, the, so when he goes back to the heel hook, what I wanna do is take this toe and put it inside his bicep, okay? Now that was available because, go back, I was available because to get the heel hook, he, he opens up and he goes in here. Now I push, and I'm gonna pop my foot on top of his shoulder, okay? Where he's now in a situation where he can't get a heel hook, okay? So we're here, we, uh, go back step. we start off by hiding, right? What he's probably gonna wanna do, what we're gonna look at later is he's probably gonna wanna take a scoop grip here so he can start advancing positionally and looking for heel hooks, okay? So we deny him that opportunity 
by hiding our heel, we open up our legs with confidence because we know how to stay safe with open legs. Okay? We hide the heel by rotating the back of our knee to face his hips, and we bring our secondary leg away from his arms. The two main things we're trying to avoid are immediately giving heel exposure through like an unforced error where we just, like we made a mistake, he didn't really do anything proactively to force this to happen, we just didn't really know how to keep ourselves safe. Here we deny that, that error by being defensively savvy, we keep our secondary leg away from him and he's not able to advance the way he wants to. Okay, now the next thing he looks for is he takes an ankle lock. We wanna keep him from being able to draw the, the wrist down to the ankle. Now this is where danger begins. Okay, here, this is not gonna work anymore. You're not gonna get that foot in place. Right here, you've gotta focus on like coming towards him and hand fighting, okay? But we wanna, we wanna go a little uh, earlier than that. Here, I go foot to foot. Yeah, let go for one second. You guys see what I'm doing with my foot? This foot like curls down. I'm still hiding the heel, and then this foot covers. Okay, what I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm making it hard for him. See how I'm occupying the space behind this elbow? That elbow can't come back. Now it can. Yeah, that's where the danger begins. You're here, and goes back. Now when he fishes for the heel hook, you pop that foot in there. You can sometimes even like, I, I've even done this sometimes too, even if he doesn't, see how there's like a little bit of space here? If you can get your big toe in there, do you guys see? Oh, no, keep it locked, keep it locked. Do you guys see what my big toe is doing? Okay, if you can get that in there, you can do what, what I'm doing here, sit up again. Where we go for a toe slip. Okay, so you've got, I'm sure you guys have heard of heel slips, right? Right, a heel slip is where the heel slips over the wrist. Then we also have toe slips with the toes slip in front of the bicep. Okay, in 50-50, I think toe slips are better. All right, so right here, he takes the ankle lock, we go here, he reaches back, we pop our toes in front of his bicep, and then we can get the toes of the primary leg in front of the bicep and on top of his shoulder. Okay, make sense, guys? All right, let's get started. One, two, three. One of his goals that we were talking about was that he wants to get a scoop grip on this leg, right? And we keep him from being able to do that by keeping our leg away. But now he takes an ankle lock. And now to defend the ankle lock, what did I do? I put the foot here. Okay, now I put the foot back where he can grab it, right? So now, an intelligent opponent, like if someone goes for a heel, heel hook here, I'm sure like what a lot of you guys are thinking is like, why would anyone do that? Yes, I, I agree, you shouldn't be doing this here, but people will still do it. That's why I do this, he goes to the heel, and we do the toe slip. So what we just did there was an inside pummel with our left foot, can you go into a toe slip. Now what we're going to look at is, here he reaches for a scoop grip on this leg. This is what he should be doing. Okay, this is a much more intelligent effort. Keep going, get the scoop grip. If he, if he gets a scoop grip, okay, this is not the end of the world. There are still plenty of things we can do here, okay? Uh, but we obviously don't want him to get here. Okay, so come back. So we're here. Now I feel him reaching, instead of for the, the, the heel hook here, he's reaching for this. And when I see this happening immediately, right, as soon as the wrist, go back to here, as soon as the wrist moves away toward, uh, from the primary leg towards the secondary leg, I know he's reaching for a scoop grip on this leg. Okay? So what I want to do is, instead of an inside pummel, because I can't inside pummel anymore because his wrist is in my way, I'm going to outside pummel. Okay, so I'm here, the knee retracts, and I outside pummel. And we're in effect doing like pretty much the same move. So he goes here. But you have to like, we have to be very aware of what he's doing with his arms, right? Like, if I let him get this scoop grip, it's not the end of the world, we're gonna talk about what to do here, but obviously now he's sort of like gotten to his next step, right? Which is not what we want. Come back. So we're here. And then get something out of this. So he reaches, as soon as I see this drifting, as soon as I see that, there's realistically only one thing he's doing. He's trying to grab this leg. So I bring the knee back. So it's, it's, again, this is like kind of another race, right? I'm bringing the knee back, and I'm pummeling to here. Okay, now I pop the foot in front, and he can't heal up me. And we're gonna talk about why we're doing this later. This is for, we're gonna start to shift into our own offense. We're going from defense into offense, okay? Which is the key to 50-50. Okay, so we come back, I'm here. He knows, his, what he would've liked to have been able to do is get a scoop grip on this leg just to start, right? But we made that hard for him. If he does get it, we're gonna talk about you strip, and we get away. We'll talk more about that later, okay? So we're here, and he goes for that, but we kept it away. Okay, now 
the next best thing is an ankle lock. We block him from finishing the ankle lock. We saw how to stop kind of a naive heel hook here where he just digs for it. But now a more intelligent opponent goes for this. Knee comes back, foot comes in front, push, and we get a foot in front. The reason why this is safe, guys, is he can't heel hook me here as long as my foot's on his bicep, right? Even if he's able to catch my heel here, uh, your foot is in a good position to toe slide, okay? So we're here, uh, start from the beginning with an ankle. Here, he goes through, knee comes back, outside pummel. If he goes for the heel hook right away, we go inside pummel. Okay, we're always trying to occupy the, the, uh, like the position at his bicep with our foot, okay? That's what's gonna make it easy for us to toe slip. So he goes here, we go outside pummel, okay? We push, and then the foot goes in front. And if we, if we really mess up, and he manages to catch our heel, you're still like, so here you can put your toe in, and you can pop the toes out. Does that make sense, guys? I mean, obviously we don't want that to happen, but worst case scenario, you, we do have toe slip options that are available to us there. Okay, so we're here, one last time. He can't, we, if we don't put the foot there, and we're seated, he has a really good opportunity to ankle lock us, okay? So, the other way you could stop him from getting the ankle lock is by coming up, and we're gonna talk about that later on, but for now, we're mainly concerned with double seated stuff, where we're both seated. So the best way to stop him from finishing this ankle lock in a double seated situation is to go here. You could also come forward in hand fight, but the problem with this is my hands are now occupied with hand fighting, and I can't start looking at counters. Right, like we wanna start shifting into counters, right? If I'm here, I can't, I, there's no way I can leg lock him if my hands are occupied with hand fighting, okay? If, I mean, if I feel like I'm gonna get broken, that is of course what I'll do, but I'd rather do that with my feet so I can have my hands free to attack. Okay, so anyway, we're here. He's not going for this one, where he just goes to the heel right there. That's gonna lead to the inside pummel. Instead, he's going for the scoop grip on the secondary leg, so we go outside pummel, and we get to the same position. Okay, make sense, guys? All right, let's get started. One, two, three. So, so far, we've looked at keeping ourselves safe. The, the main focus has been keeping the back of our knee facing into his hips, uh, and maintaining this as he spins, right? And then we also talked a lot about keeping him from getting control of his secondary leg. Then we talked about progressing to having our foot on his shoulder, okay? The main reason we're looking to do that is because, um, what we wanna do to start attacking him in 50-50 uh, when it comes to heel hooks, is we wanna get into a position where we can, uh, so hide the heel, where we can climb on top, okay? Because if I can climb on top, if I can gain hip height, what I can do is I can alter the position of my hips in relation to his knee. Right, so what I can do is here, my hips are facing the side of his knee, and if I slip all the way through, they face the front of his knee, and then I can catch his heel really easily, okay? But to do that, so rotate again. To do that, the first step is gonna be, I gotta get my foot on his stomach, right? How do I do that here? I pull it back, and you always, you always wind up exposing your heel. Now what you'll see a lot of people do, and this 100% gonna work, is they'll keep your legs locked, like it with 50-50. They'll go like here, and they'll put this foot up, and then they'll go here. Does that make sense, guys? And they went here. So he can't heel hook because this leg is blocking it. But what I run into a lot when I do that is, he grabs his ankle lock, and he's still gonna finish that, but now I just heel. I can't climb on top because he's holding my leg. Right, it's really, really difficult. Okay, <clears throat> so what we're looking at here is, we go, for some reach for the screw curve on his leg. Outside pummel, or, uh, no, no, come back. No, I go up. Good, now reach for the heel. Or inside pummel, and we get here. The advantage of having your leg here is that, look what this foot can do. It can come back and go on his stomach without ever being behind his tricep. If it's not behind his tricep, then there's no chance he can heal with me, right? So if my foot is here, and I bring it back, yep, that's right there, right? You've got this option, which is, this is definitely really good, and a lot of people do this, but the reason why I don't like this is because if he holds that ankle lock, man, you have a lot of people who will keep you from being able to spin here, okay? It's pretty difficult, okay? So instead, we're fighting to get this foot up here, okay? So we hide, okay, let's just reach for this. We'll do an outside pummel, <coughs> we post, and we get here. 
Okay? Now, what a lot of people are going to do at this point is they're going to crowd towards you. Okay? He comes towards me and he's starting to crush me. What I want to do is get this foot on the stomach. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm holding onto his legs and now I take my left leg and I go underneath. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my left leg. I'm using the side of my ankle to push as I pull my right leg back and I get that on his stomach. Okay? So from the beginning, um, however you guys get the foot on the shoulder, we get here. Okay, now what he does is he goes to crush you. Right, he goes to crowd me. I take my hands, I go left hand on this leg, right hand on the secondary leg, and now what I do is I take, I take my right leg and I go underneath, and now I'm gonna push. And I can pull my right leg back. What he wants to keep, the, the whole point, the reason he's crowding me, so I'll take this way. Guys, the reason he's crowding me is because he knows, like at this point, if he brings his chest away from me, like that's gonna happen, right? And then if that happens, he knows I'm gonna go this way. But we're assuming that he's a knowledgeable 50-50 opponent, okay? Or he might just be like really big and strong and wants to crush you there. Like that happens too, right? So we're here. He doesn't want my foot to get on his stomach, so he comes towards me. Man, this can be like, this can be really, really annoying. So we're gonna take our left leg. I go underneath, and now I'm pushing. I, it's not pushing him, right? Like I'm not like pushing his torso with my leg. I'm pushing myself against him. Does that make sense, guys? Right here, uh, good jujitsu is usually about moving yourself around the other guy. You, you are gonna move him as well, but more so you're gonna move yourself around him rather than just moving him, okay? So again, we're here, I get to here, we're here. I'm holding on to both his legs, but remember like this is what we were fighting to keep him from getting. And now we are working towards getting that, okay? If at this point he hides his heel and retracts his leg away from me, He's giving me this. Okay, now, he, I, if I was him, this is what I would do. I think this is more intelligent, okay? Um, but it does give me this here, okay? So come back. So we're here, okay, okay. again. So we're here. I'm gonna take my left leg, I go underneath, and I'm gonna extend. Um, I'm sure what some of you guys are thinking right now is, what if he heel hooks you here? Like, don't even respect that, just hide your heel. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> This is unreal. Now, if you if you just like sit here, like yeah, okay, <laughs> yes. Now then it can become real. But like, think think of, think about what the motion of my left leg is doing anyway. I'm essentially hiding my heel. Does that make sense, guys? Right. So, yes. If you are like half asleep and he grabs your foot here, there's a guy from Kazakhstan named Usman Kasimov. If you guys watch the Asian trials, we were actually talking about Kasimov on the drive here. He actually loves this finish. Like I've seen him break people with this. But it's mostly because like people are waiting. You know what I mean? Like if we're here, let go. If the second I bring this foot across, see how my toes are pointed? Like I'm hiding my heel there, right? Now when he goes to the heel up, see what I just did? I pointed the back of my knee at his hips. So I'm I'm like moving myself around him the way I want offensively, but I'm also hiding the heel at the same time. Okay? Like this is the key to like good 50-50. I want you guys to see how. Defense and offense are always like, we're always like bouncing back and forth between them, okay? Anyway, so now we're here, and now we have an outside triangle, okay? Or an outside Senkaku. And from here, we're gonna start attacking, but we'll get there next. All right, so one more time. We got on top of his shoulder, okay, with our foot, however we did. Now he knows, if he moves away from me, bang, that goes right there, right? He's giving it to me, okay? So he doesn't wanna give me that. He wants to crush me, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, while I'm holding his legs, I take this leg and I go underneath. I'm pointing my toes as soon as I do that, so even if he does think about heel hooking this leg, we're just gonna rotate. It's gonna be real, really, really hard for him to get any kind of real breaking pressure. And as I do that, I am pushing my own body against his to get my foot here, okay? And now from there, we're gonna see uh, what our next offensive steps are gonna be. All right, make sense, guys? Let's get started. One, two, three.